Let's take a closer look at the latest MotoGP aero developments for the 2024 season. During the Zepang test, we could see a lot of interesting innovations we should talk about. Let's start with Ducati. Ducati kept their strong shape and dominated testing. They refined their already very good package with bodywork updates. They kept their front wings and rear Stegosaurus wings, but introduced new diffuser surfaces at the sides. Ducati works with little side wings at the front to create downforce directly at the front wheel while cornering. Their side bodywork basically works in two steps. At the upper part they have cooling louvres and at the lower part they produce downforce. To disturb the air as little as possible, they reduced the number of split lines to a minimum. At the front, they use their known channel to guide air underneath the bike and to create a diffuser effect. Behind that, starts the side diffuser surface, which is curved and produces downforce when it's close to the ground. So that's another big step for Ducati. The two bikes to challenge the Ducati are KTM and Aprilia. And here it's interesting to see that KTM focuses on wings and Aprilia on diffusers. So let's take a closer look at KTM first. KTM now cooperates with people from the Red Bull F1 aero department and we can see the result on the bike quite clearly. Most obvious innovation is their two element front fender wing, which is unsprung weight so the downforce doesn't have to go through the suspension and can act directly at the wheel. And then they created a massive and complex rear wing. It is so big that riders kick it every time they get off the bike. It's quite a nice aero design job though. We have two vertical elements at the sides which transition into the main element with a flap growing above it, with straight trailing edge and gurney flap. And underneath hangs another straight wing element with tiny supports. The high position makes sure that it's in clean air and the curved shape makes sure it's also producing downforce in corners. KTM's diffuser philosophy is a bit different to other teams, like we discussed in my earlier videos. KTM is trying to seal their side diffuser in corners with a strake. Turbulences of the front wheel are caught by a duct, which channels them underneath the bike behind the strake, so these turbulences don't disturb the side diffuser in corners. Also here, all outlets are pushed up to make space for the diffuser. And they use the little side wings at the rear axle. Also Aprilia hired F1 aerodynamicists and we can clearly see it on the bike. Like we said before, they concentrated on diffuser surfaces. They use the little side wings at the front axle and also have a structure behind the front wheel to catch the turbulences. Above that, we can see the diffuser surface with large leading edge radius a surface which is pulled inboard as much as possible and even an upper strake to seal the diffuser in corners. The rider's foot is positioned very high to make space for a decent diffuser extraction. Because the surface is so tight, they need to use blisters to fit parts underneath. To further optimize diffuser performance, you want to avoid any disturbances of the diffuser exit flow. For that reason, Aprilia covers the rear wheel to have a smooth exit flow. And Another highlight is the diffuser underneath the rear bodywork. They use the common rear air flow to cool the tire surface, but they now pull this flow up with side strakes to produce more downforce and to reduce the wake behind the bike. Their rear bodywork doesn't use wings anymore, but curved surfaces, which pull the flow together in a straight line, so reduce the wake and hence drag, and pull the flow up in corners. If air goes up, bike goes down. And to check the flow conditions and to compare that with their CFD, they used an aero rake with 50 points and we can see the airlines underneath. We will see these rakes more often in MotoGP in the future. Honda and Yamaha were lacking pace so far, but Honda seems to catch up in terms of aero development. They showed an elegant solution for the rear wing, which is combining the Stegosaurus wings with a horizontal rear wing. So they can generate more rear downforce and corners with the vertical elements and in the straight line with the horizontal wing. At the same time, this design is relatively low so it doesn't disturb the rider, but it probably doesn't get as much clean air as the others. At the sides, Honda uses a very smooth surface and also pushed air outlets to the top so they can use the side as a diffuser in corners, but it doesn't look as sophisticated as the previous free bikes. And Yamaha came with a bike which looks pretty much like last year, but the team was still very optimistic about the season. 
So maybe they have an engine advantage? So let me know how you like the latest aero developments in the comments below. And if you want to be a part of the top motorsport aero development and work in the technical development of F1 teams or other categories, check out my online career accelerator program. It's an intensive six week course, which helps you to prepare yourself for a career in F1 with Katia V6 licenses and lots of valuable knowledge you can only get from people who worked in the industry. The first people who finished this course are already working in F1's aero departments. So you could be the next one. Check out the course with the link below and make sure you state that you found the course through my YouTube channel. See you at the next one.